Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, last time you saw us go through Parcel Bundler, and this time we're going to do exactly the same thing, but using a much more flexible system, which is much more complex, and that one is called Webpack. So let's go take a look. So Webpack, like Parcel, is another JavaScript bundling system, and what that does is it takes all the various assets you've got and puts them together into the way you want them. Um, now, Parcel was very much config free. You used a simple command line and then it did the rest in the background for you. Webpack is much more complicated uh, because it gives you the freedom to do absolutely anything, including changing from TypeScript to JavaScript, changing things using Babel to go from between different versions of JavaScript and uh, ECMAScript, but that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. Today we're going to go through how to get a similar setup to how you how we got with Parcel. So let's get into it. So as before, what we're going to do is we're in our Node.cg install, we're going to change the bundles directory, and we're going to make a new webpack. Whoa, webpack setup bundle. Change into that folder and then yo node cg as before now again i'm going to go through the dependencies quite quickly here for setting this up but change the things as you need when you get to them and now we've got all that let's open this up so now we're going to open in our editor first thing we're going to do is install a few dependencies we need for this we need to install webpack and a few other bits so npm install save dev webpack webpack cli CSS loader, style loader, and HTML webpack plugin. You need all of these to get this particular bit to work. So we'll set those installing and then we'll go back into our editor and start moving things around ready for, ready for webpack. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new directory and as before call this src or source and then we're going to move our three files that we need to pack into there. Nice and simple. And now we're going to have to wait for the install to finish so we don't end up fighting with it for editing the package JSON. So once we've copied the files into the SRC directory, what we'll want to do is we'll probably want to separate these out a bit. Now in here, we've actually got HTML, JavaScript and CSS all in line. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with this, but it does mean it's a bit more difficult to manage. You end up searching through, especially with larger files, you end up searching through a lot more stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly separate these out a bit. So right click in dashboard, new file. I'm gonna create a new file and call this panel.css. And then in here, we're going to copy the style bit, the bits between the style tag into here and then we can remove it entirely. And then we're gonna do the same for the JavaScript in here. New file, panel.js, and then back in here, copy everything, and then paste it in. And then we can remove that from there as well. Now we have to re-include these back in, so we do script source equals panel.js for the uh, JavaScript, and then in here, link href equals panel CSS, type equals text CSS, and that's it. And then we'll do the same thing for the graphics. So, a new file, graphics.css, and a new file, graphics.js, copy the CSS into there, and replace it with a link, type equals text CSS, and then the same with the JavaScript. And now we've got all those bits together, and there's no change you need to do with the extension, we can start setting up our configuration for Webpack. So we'll need a new file, and this will be in the root of the bundle, and we call this webpack.config.js. Now this file will contain all of our Webpack configuration we need. Now there are three bits we need to do for this, we need to create configuration for our extension, a configuration for our dashboard, and we need to create a configuration for our graphics. 
To do that, we'll need a couple of modules. So we'll pull in the path module from Core JavaScript, and we'll also pull in one of the ones we installed earlier, which is the HTML Webpack plugin from HTML Webpack plugin. And then we'll need to export these configurations as well at the end, ready for Webpack to use. So module.exports equals extension config, dashboard config, and graphics config. So let's start with the extension config. This is actually one of the shorter ones. So what you need to define for Webpack is an entry point, and this is going to be our extension index.js. So if based on the location of the Webpack, dot slash source slash extension slash index dot JS. And then we actually also need to set the output. The file name for this must be index.js to index.js to work with Node.cg. And then we also need to set the path. And this is why we pulled in path. Obviously I'm running on Windows, but sometimes you might be developing this on Linux or somewhere else. So you need to actually set this correctly. So you join the directory name for this current file. And that's what this bit pulls out and then join to it the word extension. And then the final piece of the puzzle is the library target. For this, we want it to set to CommonJS2. And this is just the way that the index.js is consumed by Node.cg. Uh, that's similar to in Parcel where we set target node. They just use slightly different naming conventions. The final bit I'll put in here is I will change the mode for this particular bit to production. And all this does is it means it compiles it to a bit smaller file for yourself. So that's it for the extension config. The next bit we need to do is for the dashboard config. The complicated th complicated bit about the dashboard configs and the graphics configs is you end up with a lot of files for every single one of your dashboard panels and every single one of your graphics that you're going to be having exported. So for that, you can use named entries. Now what I'm using here is I'm calling them exactly the same thing as they come in at. This will be source dashboard slash panel dot JS. And this is the JavaScript entry point. And what that will do is that creates an entry called panel that starts in that file. Next, we want to set an output for this and we can create something that makes it so it outputs every single thing as we need. For that, we'll set file name to square brackets name.js and then set the path for this to path.join and very similar to what we did with the extension set it to dashboard and what this name bit will do is it will take the name of the entry which in this case is panel and create a js file for that one in particular the next two bits we need to do is set up the modules and the plugins for this. We need to add, on, add in a module with some rules to load our CSS files properly. So backslash slash dot CSS and then a dollar sign will match any file that ends with dot CSS. And we want this to use the style loader and the CSS loaders for these. The final bit we need to do here as well is to get it to actually understand the HTML file we've got there. So for this, we'll pull in the HTML Webpack plugin. So new HTML Webpack plugin, and then we'll pass to that some options. And the file name for this one will be panel.html. The template will be the HTML file we've got just there. So dot slash source slash dashboard slash panel.html. And then there's a final config we need for this, which is to tell it to use the panel chunks. When you add a new dashboard to this, you will have to add in new entries and create new HTML Webpack plugin plugins and change the chunks to match this. So say we had another panel and we called it panel two, then we'd have to create a new, add in a new plugin. And we tell this one to use the other panels. You just gotta make sure these don't collide. You can change these to be whatever you want, as long as it's the set is the input file and the output file don't collide. Now I'm just gonna get rid of these so that Webpack won't complain when we try to run it. And I'm just gonna quickly go in and change something that I told you to do earlier that you don't need to do. You don't need that line in there, nor that line. So you don't need the link and you don't need the script tag in the HTML. What you do need to do is to go into panel.js and import panel.css. And that tells it to pull in the CSS file for this. So back into our Webpack config, this is all we need for the dashboard config. And the final bit is the graphics config. So for the graphics config, we can copy most of the things from, in fact, everything from the dashboard config. So copy that, paste it in there, and then looking in our graphics folder, you can see we've got a few things named slightly differently. So in here, we're going to call this entry index, and then we'll change this to be source graphics. And then the JavaScript file we're using is called graphics. And this is to show that you don't actually have to call things all exactly the same name. It can be called whatever you want all the way through. Change the output to go to the graphics directory. You don't need to change anything in the module. And then in here, we need to change the file name output to index. 
the template to index and the dash bit to look for source graphics index. And here you'll also need to change the chunks back to be the same entry, entry there. And then we just need to go back into the index HTML we modified earlier, get rid of the same sort of bits that we did in the panel, and then also import the graphics CSS file in the JavaScript. And there we go. So that is everything you need for the Webpack config. So the next thing we need to do after we've set up all this is you need to set up the scripts in our package JSON. So if we come down into there, you can see all the dependencies we installed earlier are there. Let's create a new scripts setup. And for this, we will create one called start. And for that, we will run webpack dash dash watch. And then we'll create another one called build. And this one will just run webpack. That's nice and simple there. So now we can go back into the terminal and run npm run start and this should start up webpack and we'll see if we get any errors and it looks like it's all worked fine from there and we should see a dashboard an extension and a graphics folder all with the items as we expect to see now obviously this is going to keep running and you can keep leave this running while you're developing your graphics and your extensions and your dashboards and when you're finished then you can stop it with Control c and then you can run npm run build and this will actually do a final build of everything which strips out any extra bits and pieces and does a bit more of a tighter build on it it will actually reduce the size of some things which is not so important for that there are no errors in here but it's got a few bits of breaking changes and bits and pieces like that which shouldn't really matter to you if you have any issues with that jump in and uh, ask in the node cg discord or come and find my discord which will be linked below and i'll try and help you in there as well but from that we can now start up our node cg instance which will be using our webpack setup bundle and you can see here the parcel bundle sat happily right next to it if we're going to graphics we've also got the same setup in here and that's it that's a webpack setup bundle ready for you to use now there are a few gotchas with this webpack is very complicated to set up at times um i spend a couple of hours trying to get it to work nicely with just a more up-to-date JavaScript version for bundling the extensions and that wouldn't work for me if you actually get that working let me know in the comments below that'd be great uh, you can also quite quickly set this up to also run TypeScript there's some great tutorials on that but if you'd like me to go have a go through that with using it in graphics and dashboards as well as the extensions then let me know in the comments below I'll be happy to uh, investigate that and see how we go um, but apart from that thank you very much for watching every single one of you if you want to chat with me at all come and find me on twitch at twitch.tv slash tv sliver where i play games as well as uh, do a lot of ju just chatting segments where i talk with the community about all sorts of random things we've had comments on books and art and various other weird and wonderful things that i'm interested in um, or come and join me in my discord which will be linked below um, apart from that i hope you have a great day and i'll catch you next time